Hey everybody, um, I wanted to cover a subject here that uh, I kind of felt like maybe nobody really covers and nobody's making content for it so I'm going to terribly give a shot at making content for it. Mostly focusing on probably one of my favorite D&D, or one of my favorite D&D products that was ever really made. And it's a shame that nobody really talks about it outside of, oh yeah, I liked it. Um, yeah, kind of wanted to bother other YouTubers about it, because I suck at this whole video thing. But, probably the best thing that almost every DM can get is good old-fashioned issues of Dungeon and Dragon Magazine. <clears throat> now, if you're new to the game, say you hopped in in 5th edition, you may think Dragon is uh, Dragon Plus, which is some sort of phone app that has articles that you can read and occasionally stats for a monster here and there. It all stems from this bad boy. Or, you know, we can go back a little further to... Uh, Doo, doo, doo. I've made this stack too big. This bad boy. Or, you know, you can keep going, really. I think my oldest issue is like 65. Dragon was a publication that TSR made uh, starting in 76, I think. 76, 77. Uh, after the launch of the Strategic Review, which was a magazine that they made for general wargaming and role-playing. Uh, strategic Review only lasted about seven issues. Kind of going off the top of my head here, so... <sighs> I'm going to get a thing wronger here and there. After uh, Afterwards, Dragon was a lot more focused on Dungeons and Dragons. And... These are just so cool. Uh, I don't care what edition you play, these are worth picking up. Uh, as, as you can tell, I'm a big fan. I've got probably, I want to say about 130, 140 issues here of Dungeon and Dragon magazine. So what, what makes this magazine so cool? Well, for starters, um, each issue covered different content. Uh, 109 here, you can make your own classes for first edition. Just straight out the gate. They have they have rules where uh, if you wanted like a fighter's uh, Thaco uh, cost you an experience, you know, certain experience levels. You could make a character here that could do everything but would take like 8,000 experience to get to level 2. <clears throat> Ah, I need to quit coughing here. Uh, the St. Louis Classic. Uh, Dragon, they, they did all kinds of stuff. Like, for instance, this one had dragons that you couldn't find in the Draconomicon or any other book. Uh, like yellow dragons or purple dragons. Uh, another thing in here was like building a better dragon. Where they, this is just a chart of powers that you can give a dragon, and it's not unlike uh, it's not unlike uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics, where those dragons had uh, all these different powers and stuff. This is very similar to that. Only this was made in the 80s. Uh, no, this was made in the 90s. This is an old 90s issue. <laughs> so, Dragon was in print as a print magazine from 76 to, I want to say, late 2007. Right before the advent, 4th edition. This was the last issue. And, uh, 
one of my favorite issues here because they have time dragons. These things get to be like CR 99. Let's say time dragon CR CR 90 is maxed out for the the great worm time dragon that breathes a cone of time. Uh, but yeah, it had all kinds of cool stuff that you could integrate into your games. Like unique dragons, uh, unique classes. If you were in third ed, pretty much every issue, almost every issue in here comes with new feats, powers, and prestige classes that players could test out. Um, monster classes. Like, you can get monsters warped by Demogorgon. In case anybody hasn't heard, Stranger Things is pretty good. You know, Demogorgon. Uh, and, and just so much cool stuff to use. Uh, magic items are everywhere. Monsters everywhere. Um, and then, not to sell it short, you've got Dungeon. I don't have any real old, old issues of Dungeon. Uh, Dungeon was is a much younger publication. I want to say it was made towards the end of the 80s. Uh, Dragon had 259 printed issues plus a uh, few specials, annuals, and uh, five best ofs. Dungeon only had about, I want to say, 150 issues. Now, where Dungeon's a little different which there's a few different eras of dungeon besides the the older and the new uh, is these were just adventures almost exclusively uh, for a while like you know instead of paying the ten fifteen dollars for a module at the time uh, you'd spend the whole six dollars when this came out and you got do, 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 do. Uh, four whole adventures in here. Four complete adventures. Yeah, just right on the cover there. Druids vow to save the monsters. Copper mine seized by troglodytes. Reclusive giants raise evil chickens. I gotta play that sometime. Uh, panic grips citizens of Narwhal. Friggin' awesome. Four adventures, six bucks. That's a dollar fifty an adventure. Uh, later on, and for a short while afterwards, this was dropped. Certain issues of Dungeon uh, not, uh, would also have polyhedron attached. This one I liked in particular because th this issue in particular I liked because it actually came with a uh, adventure path, the beginnings of an adventure path, the Shackled City. Uh, Dungeon had two big ones that I remember. Age of Worms was one, Shackled City was the other. Actually still have the map for Shackled City. And then this Polyhedron actually has a D20 World War II Vietnam style war game. And you have to literally flip it over. Halfway to the magazine the book goes upside down. Um, and just, you could pull this stuff. I mean, it's all D20 in this one, so you could take, you could have a World War II soldier pop up in a D&D &D game. Friggin' cool, right? Uh, here's another one I really liked. Uh, Nature's Revenge, 20th level adventure. I don't like running high level adventures, but hey, it's there. Um, the Gith Attack... And spiders, spiders everywhere. But the back, Spelljammer. This was a nice little template uh, if you had your second edition Spelljammer stuff to convert it to third edition. Uh, it even came with some tokens uh, for airships right out the right out the gate. So super useful. And. You know, they, they just had this stuff for days. Um, just all kinds of neat things. Stats. 
uh, monsters, extra monsters, monsters that you've never seen in a book. Like, uh, I think there's a Chupacabra in here, which wasn't really revisited until Pathfinder a few years later. Uh, this one's really cool. Uh, psionics, I don't like. But in the corner here, 101 fantastic settings. And all it is in this list is... One hundred and one wondrous whereabouts, and it just gives you a uh, hundred and one things, pla places of interest. Uh, at like number sixteen, at the field of deeds, a go uh, the gods meet regularly in council. For the desperate, this could be an ideal place to spy on or seek audience with the gods. Whether such actions will invite divine wrath remains to be seen. For mortals have yet to find this exclusive plane. Well, elusive plane. I can't talk right now. Eh. Good stuff. Now, it, it kind of perturbs me. Nobody really talks about these wonderful issues of this wonderful magazine that ran for... Yeah, 30 plus years. About 30 years. It, it, they kept it going in a PDF... Uh, format in a digital format uh, for fourth edition. By then, it had changed quite a bit, and then now it's an app on a phone. Which the interviews are cool, but there's nothing anything quite like this because there were interviews in this. Like Dungeons and Dragons goes to the movies. Um, this was really cool. This this is a second edition, second edition uh, issue. I want to say it was late the second edition. Uh, and it has a Dark Ages campaign setting where it actually explains like Anglo-Saxon uh, the UK you know, before it was the UK uh, Britain and gives you stats for monsters uh, character kits and just and on top of all, 101 Paladin quests, like, you can you can just rip this 101 Paladin quest straight out of the book, and done. You're good. You're golden. <clears throat> now, I think I was getting back to it a little. Rail myself back in. Why, why is Dragon uh, worth getting in today's 5th edition, some of you may never have even read these, or even heard of these in some degree. What's so cool about it? Well, convert it. 5th edition is probably one of the most conversion-friendly editions of D&D, besides probably 1E. <sighs> uh, it's it's probably definitely one of the best editions you could you can probably play and just take stuff out and use. And there's no lack of of cool things. Like I could pull out a random issue here. Like, hey. This has Ed Greenwood's Nine Hells to it. Uh back whenever he was talking about his uh his own home campaign, The Realms. Wonder what happened to that. Uh, got here settings. This is a this is a edition. Uh, this is a uh, issue uh, dedicated to bringing up a bunch of old editions up to third ed. Well, three point five. Uh, Greyhawk, Ravenloft, uh, Dark Sun, Alchemy, and Planescape. They, they all kind of get some flavor in this, this particular issue. And probably the biggest benefit is most of these you can buy in lots and for cheap as dirt. Uh, the most expensive issue that I ever had would probably be that 359. This guy. Um, this was like ten bucks. It can go for a little higher, but it's because it's the last printed issue. Uh, early, early issues can go for a lot. I want to say if, if it's below issue 50, expect to pay some cash. 
but also if it's below issue 50, might not have a whole lot you're interested in. That still gives you 300 uh, plus issues of just dragon that you can find for about a buck a pop, really. Um, that's that's if you don't buy lots. I've bought like 10 of these in a lot once for six bucks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some of these, they have cool art, you know, we got space whales, yay, space whales, and, uh, just all kinds of stupid cool stuff, and um, just get some of this, I don't care if you put it in a bathroom and you want to read it while you're on the can, uh, you know, just just go through it. There's so many cool things that you can do with this that it's underappreciated to a point, like to almost to an extreme point. I think people, I think people back then had the stigma that it was always power gaming, especially in three five, because three five is the edition where you had like ten books to make one character. <sighs> Weird times. Weird, weird times. And, uh... They, uh people kind of looked at it that way. And I, I wouldn't want to. Like, I really would not want to look at it that way as much as... Uh, here's cool ideas. Like, this issue has, uh, Dragotha, the, uh, the original Undead Dragon, in, uh, his first edition form. This was, like, the first time he was actually on paper with stats. Before this, he was on a map. I mean, you can you can do all kinds of stuff. There's a you want a variant for Strahd von Zarovich outside of the Curse of Strahd edition. There's a CR12 and a CR18 in here. Uh, you want to surprise players with monsters they've never heard of. Uh, you know, there's this is an issue with like ghost dragons and. Uh, the magical items from Athos and like the Penangalan. I don't know, this is some type of vampire. The Penangalan. Like, nobody's gonna know what this is. If, you're, if you find a player who, who can verify what all these are and start spewing stats right back at you. You need to tell them to chill. <laughs> Stop reading everything. Or DM, because they're reading everything. Uh, I, like, a good issue of Dungeon here uh, can be the start to a campaign. And it can be a good one-shot on the fly. It, it works just like any other module. It has a beginning and end. Uh, some of them connect together, some of them don't perfectly good but end of story dragon dungeon great magazines 30 year legacy why am I getting these for so cheap like they, these should be cherished I mean it really really look at this we got Shadahara settings this came with a bat to Shadahara or Shadara. I don't I can't pronounce the crap right now. Hey, you know, this came with all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, back before the before the shadow fell, you had the plane of shadow. This is the god that resides in the plane of shadow. That's a really cool adventure seed. Tactics for dragons. How to fight with dragons. I think it's like uh, black dragons like to suffocate their prey under the swampy waters. Just cool stuff like that. I think this even has uh, the draconic language in here. Pretty sure it does. Uh, they, they also have GM tips for how to let players... Uh, you know how to let players do things, how to uh, how to GM better, how to handle things better. 
there, there is no bad side to this outside of the occasional bad issue, which I think I've only got like three out of these 150 issues. Uh, tips for avoiding those bad issues. Um, between 95 and 96, TSR was in a really bad spot before Wizards of the Coast bought the company. Those issues. <sighs> Not every issue in there was bad. Like my, uh, the, the Dark Ages issue. Super, super cool. That was from around that era. I also have one that was like Dragon Thief. And there wasn't anything of, su of substance to it, except for an alleged CD that was packed in with it, which I didn't get in my issue, but I think I paid 20 cents for it, 20, 25 cents. You can get this stuff on Amazon. You're going to pay a little bit more for Amazon because you got to pay shipping, but some of these are like literally a penny on Amazon plus shipping. <coughs> But, yeah, maybe somebody in the, the YouTuber community, like Hank Renfornail or uh, Captain Courageous or Draven Swiftblow can see this somewhere and just make this better, because I suck at videos. I just, I just play the Dungeon and the Dragon. I don't do the videos. Not very well, at least. I suck at talking to a camera. Give me a personal chat for hours. Give me a camera. Uh, not, not so great. But, yeah, just to, to end it up, make it simple, buy crazy cool dragon dungeons, dungeon dragons, read them, download them, put them into your brain, look at them whenever you play 5th edition, or OSR games, or old school D&D, or 3.5, there's nothing bad to this at all. That being said, have a good one.